Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back. Long time you see with this tutorial. Um, and as you can tell today, we actually created some kind of highlight for our build mode. So whenever we're building, we highlight which kind of tower we're actually trying to build. And we also implement the tower icons, as you can tell, right below my character over here. Once I'm swapping my selection, they, it actually swaps the, um, the size of that button and we can actually see what's going on. Now let's have a look at what it is going to look like once we have five towers. Something of the sort. Now I can't go past this point because we only have two towers and the code is blocking me, but as you can tell it is looking fairly cool. And guys, without further ado, let's get started. Alright, so we pretty much have to create a new piece of UI now and this is going to be to help the player know which tower he's currently selecting. Uh, of course right now we have the visual feedback in the game, so Right now I have the shock tower, right now I have the arrow tower, but that's not really obvious and we don't really know what happens if we move um, one step forward in the arrow. We don't know which one we're going to get. So we're going to give the player some kind of visual feedback by creating another piece of UI that I'm pretty much just going to copy off the spell button container. So I'll just go ahead and control C, control V on that and I'll call this tower icon container. like this and I'll just move it a little bit up like about here and I'm going to remove um, actually I'm not going to remove anything on that but we also need a new prefab so you see the spell button over here let me drag and drop that under the tower icon container and this is what I'm going to change I'm going to change the name of this to tower icon and I'm also going to remove the button element because it is not going to be a button Okay, once I've got this, I can actually, um, I'm actually going to leave this on here and drag and drop this new tower icon under the UI folder. Alright, so with pretty much any new piece of UI, let's, let me just uh, remove that really quickly. We need to add this to the UI manager. So let's open up our UI manager script. And we're pretty much just going to do uh, some code. So say right about there, we're going to be doing a region, so region for tower icon and the region and then declare a public game object tower icon container and also a public game object tower icon prefab. And just below that, I also make a public helper function that is going to fill the tower icon container. And it's going to take in a int, which is going to be the thumbnail index. And this name is might be a little bit too odd. So let's change fill tower icon container by add tower icon to container. Okay. So basically uh, we're going to be calling this function from the build mode because the build mode knows how many tower we have. Uh, and we pretty much got to be instantiating the tower icon prefab here. So let's do game object go is equal to instantiate. We're going to instantiate the tower icon prefab at uh, say vector 3.0. We don't need to care about the position because the layout is going to re uh, re reposition our prefab so we don't need to do anything on the position nor the rotation so quaternion.identity and we're spawning this as a game object and the reason we're doing this is so we can actually use it right here okay so um, we got our game object we're gonna say geo.transform.set parent and we're gonna make sure that the tower icon container dot transform is its actual parent. Okay, so we've got this. All we're missing right now is the actual icon on it. So we can say geo.get component. We're getting the image component dot sprite is equal to get action thumbnail and we have the thumbnail index as the parameter. Okay. And let's actually do plus um I think it is if we go back to our image, I think it is plus 12, but I'm not quite sure. 
so we've got eight. Okay, we're gonna be starting at the ninth. Uh, the eighth index, but the ninth image. So let's do plus eight. Okay. Another reason we're doing this, I hope you guys uh, understand, it is because we are starting all the tower buttons starting at the eighth index. So when we call this add tower icon to con um, to container, we can simply say, okay, so add the first tower, which is index zero, add the second tower, which is in index one, and over here we actually do the plus offset. Okay, so we've got this code pretty much uh, here. Now in order to call it, I like to call it from the build mode. So where exactly is the build mode? Here it is. I'm going to open up this script and somewhere about here in the start, we're going to say fill the tower icon container from UI manager. And what we're going to do is actually iterate through each and every single of our tower. Right now, I think they are stored in the tower prefab. So we can say for int i is equal to 0, as long as i is smaller than tower prefabs dot count. Then we're going to say i plus plus. And just below this, we call the UI manager. So UI manager dot instance dot fill, or no, it was the uh, add tower icon to container. And we can send him I, like this. Let's actually try this out in the game. So I'm going to boot this. And we've got a no reference because we didn't set the, where is it at? The um, tower icon prefab. So if we go back under the UI manager, the script here, we have this new tower icon container and also the tower icon prefab that we need to set. So as far as the prefab goes, it is over here, the one we've just made. And the container is this new piece of UI, right about here. Okay, now if we play once more, here they are. So these are our two towers button. Now they should not be there when I'm not in the build mode. So what I'm going to do is actually go back in the UI manager and um, we're pretty much going to turn them off whenever we don't use them. So inside of my UI manager, I'll actually create another function right here and I'll call it toggle tower icons like that. And we're going to take in a bool parameter. So bool is showing and uh, we're pretty much just going to say tower icon container dot set active is equal to is showing. Okay, and now we need to do some stuff from the build mode. So inside of the build mode, when we go over here to the the last two functions, which are activate build mode and deactivate build mode, here they are. Um, we're pretty much going to be calling UI manager dot instance dot toggle game menu. Oh, not game menu. So toggle tower icons and uh, when we activate it, of course, put it on true. And when we deactivate it, we are going to be putting that on false. All right, and I think that is going to be pretty much it in terms of the code. Okay, so on and off, as you can tell. But of course, we need to um, we need to turn it off when the game starts. And also, if I press on this, this actually works fine. Okay. So yeah, all we need to do right now is actually turn it off when the game starts. So we can do that in the UI manager, in the unit and update. And uh, somewhere around here in the uh, in the initialize, we're going to say tower icon container dot set active is equal to false. All right, let's actually try this out. And here it is. It's only there when I actually activate my build mode. Now I disappear when I press on the escape button and that's just fine because we only want to have our menu in there. But uh, this is normal behavior and we should actually be pretty much done with this episode. But I'd like to do something else first. Uh, right now they just spawn and we don't really know which one we're selecting. So what I'd like to do is actually boost up the scale of the one I'm selecting right now and also remove the panel around it. 
So as far as the panel goes, all we have to do is really just turn off this image in the tower icon container. And um, in order to just boost the scale of the other object, what I'm going to do is actually go back inside the UI manager and just have another public void. So public void, um, highlight, let's just call it highlight, selected tower. And we're going to take in the selected tower index as a parameter. Now, before we code this, let's actually go back into build mode and call it whenever we actually need it. So I ha we have a function that is called on selection change and I think that's going to be uh, that's going to be the right place to do it. So inside the on, select on selection change in the build mode we can do UI manager dot instance dot highlight selected tower index and as far as the parameter goes, I think we have something called a selected tower index right here. Okay, so we got pretty much all we need. Now, once we call this function, let's do a for each transform t in tower icon container. And let's do t.local scale is equal to say vector 3.1 times 0 0.75, which is going to reduce the size of every single icon we have. And then after that, we can do tower icon container dot transform dot get child, and we're getting the child at the index selected tower index like so. And of course, uh, once we've got this, we can do dot local scale is equal to vector three dot one. And if you want to increase the size just a little bit, maybe one point twenty five f, this is actually going to work. Um, now we need to over here in the for each, we need to actually set that as a transform. So for each transform t in tower icon container the game object dot transform and then we can do our iteration. Alright so we've got this rolling now if we go here and I press on R as you can tell now this one is highlighted if I press on E it actually goes back to the one next to it and once of course once we have five it's actually going to look something like that so it's not too bad and it's actually, actually, it's looking quite great. Alright guys, so thanks a lot for watching. If you enjoyed this or if you learned something, please leave me a like. And um, as always, it's really appreciated. If you have any question or comment, you can also leave them in the comment section below. And I'll try to answer them as soon as possible. Other than that, please subscribe for more tutorials like these. And I'll be seeing you guys in the next episode.